Welcome back to part two of how to make a corkscrew in Fusion 360. This is a slightly longer part, but we're going to get a lot accomplished. Looking at the final drawing of the cork corkscrew, we're going to create some of these spur gears that um, are at the top of the arm that moves there and engages with the vertical component to move the corkscrew. So let's start back where we finished off in part one, and we're going to go to the scripts command, and we're going to invoke the spur gear script. And this is something that's been built into the API. You can create your own scripts, but you can also use some of the default scripts that are available within Fusion 360. So put in some of those basic inputs to get an approximate gear size. Again, this is not a very extremely accurate design. We're going to be using approximation in quite a few places. As long as the corkscrew works as designed, uh, we should be OK. So once that gear comes into place, I'm going to slide it to approximately where it should be and use the joint command to place a joint. The first thing I did was I created a point at the center point of that sketch. And then I'm going to go ahead and specify a joint relationship between the center of the spur gear. There's quite a few points in the center, so make sure that you zoom in and, in fact, get the exact center. There we go. And the point that we previously just created, which is right in the middle of that housing. And there's a neat animation of what that slider joint will look like. It's not a slider. It's, in fact, a revolute. And once you come in, take a look at the side view so you can slide that gear exactly into the center of that slot. And there you go. We started with creating a spur gear and putting it into place. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the opacity of the housing. The components we're going to create from here are actually internal to the housing and being able to look through the housing is one uh, really neat way of being able to design these components without switch switching the visibility of other components on and off. So I'm going to move the gear so that one of the teeth of the gear is about horizontal. Again, approximate is fine. And I'm going to create the vertical engagement gear on a sketch plane. So pick that flat sketch plane. And let's go back to the final drawing to take a look at what we are in fact going to create. So that component right there, the one with the vertical, I'm going to call it a vertical gear. It's not really a worm gear, but there's sort of slots in a shaft that will engage with the spur gear that we just created. So that's the component that we're going to create. We're going to create a basic sketch and then revolve it around to create that engagement between the spur gear and that vertical component. Again, just so that we can um, move the arms and that vertical component moves the corkscrew up and down. So back to our sketch. Let's start sketching at the bottom. You can ignore that first diagonal tooth there. Make sure you start from the center. You can ignore that first diagonal tooth there, again, just because that's something we're going to get rid of. The spur gear doesn't go around um, completely, that circular component. So again, just model around, fairly approximate, that first horizontal tooth. I'm going to place dimensions here in just a minute so, so that your drawing looks exactly like mine. Yeah, so with that, let's go ahead and place some dimensions. 0.17 should be OK. Point 0.1 should be okay for the um, for that dimension and point 0.1 for that one there too. So once we have that basic geometry in place, the next thing I'm going to do is use the rectangular pattern command to pattern those one, two, three, four, five. Well, four. Four lines in that rectangular pattern. And we're going to create about six of these slots. You can go for seven or eight as well, but I'm going to create six in this tutorial. And you can do this several different ways. You can just drag out that vertical arrow like I am till you get it in the right spot. Or you can specify the distance uh, in, the, in the rectangular pattern command as well. So that looks like it moved perfectly, and that's the distance that I'm looking for in between um, the different teeth on the vertical gear. So I'm happy with that. The next thing I can do is, in the sketch command, close off that loop so that it can then be something that I use for the revolution or revolute command. So that shaded sketch shows me that it's complete. And now I can go ahead and use the revolve command and choose that profile and revolve it about that central axis so that I get that exact component that I'm looking for. It's not a cut. It's actually a new component. 
you go ahead and hit OK. Now, before I test for engagement with the spur gear, there's a few other things I need to do. I need to create an as-built slider joint between that component and the housing. So basically, that component needs to be told exactly how it moves with respect to the housing. Perfect. And it starts a little bit off offset from the housing. So let's go ahead and specify that. The next thing that I'm going to do here is create another sketch on that front face spur gear to create the rest of the arm. I want to cut off the rest of the spur gear um, so that we can actually check for engagement. So let's start with a simple two-point rectangle. We're creating the rest of the bottom of the arm uh, that's attached to the spur gear. So a simple rectangle. Again, just going to fidget with it a little bit till I'm happy with what I have. And then I'm going to use the spline command to connect the two top corners of the rectangle to the spur gear. Again, an image of the completed uh, corkscrew, or if you have one at hand, will explain sort of doing here. We'll go back to that in just a bit. All right, perfect. And so from there, we're going to use the extrude command to come in and cut off those pieces. So I'm going to completely get rid of those. Make sure that you go through the entire depth of the spur gear. Fantastic. Let's turn that sketch back on because we do want that rectangle to be solid. Let's pick that profile and again move it to the back face of the spur gear. And when you specify that it's a join, it actually combines it with the previous spur gear body that you had. So perfect. That is what we're looking for. Let's make sure that we ground that housing component because that stays stable. And the next thing we're going to do is enable contact sets and specify that there's a contact set between that spur gear component and the vertical component. And that will mean that when they touch, one component makes the other move. Perfect. This is starting to look really, really neat. That's exactly how we want our corkscrew to function. So that when we move the arm, the vertical component moves up and down. Now, now that we know that those, um, the vertical gear or the vertical component is um, something that works because it was an approximation from the original sketch, the next thing we're going to do is finish off some of the geometry of that component. So I'm going to start with creating basically kind of like a shaft. Use the object snapping and tracking tools that you have in Fusion 360, AutoCAD flashback. And then go ahead and create the rest of that vertical component. I'm going to trim off that internal line. And just because that was the closed loop that we, uh, loop that we revolved before, that will automatically uh, revolve the extended component when you finish sketch. Now let's create the handle of the corkscrew. So I'm going to start with creating a cylindrical body and place it on that plane, sort of perpendicular to the plane we've been using before. And that's a body that we can go ahead and specify has certain number of faces. It's symmetric in both um, on both sides. Let's say it has six faces. And then go ahead and sort of adjust to whatever length you want the handle of your corkscrew to be. This is when the fun really truly starts. I do want it to be symmetrical about all three of the axes. We're not really going to use symmetry here, but I want to point out that that's in fact an option. Well, we're not going to use symmetry except for the um, the center direction. So I'm going to use the scale command there to sort of pinch in the second to last edge on both sides and then pick the last edge and again scale that in. Again, let's zoom in just a little bit so you can scale it in and it's sort of trying to shut that edge off. If you hold Alt and scale in, it actually adds another edge in there. So I've added one more edge. I'll specify zero as the final form and notice that both those edges are now closed off on each side of the handle. That was easy, wasn't it? Now, this is since this is actually one of my favorite parts to create, let's go in and quickly assign some material and see what that final handle would look like. I want a nice wooden handle on the corkscrew that I build. So let's maybe try a couple different materials. I like cherry, although I don't like that the grain is going around. So let's change the rotation of the grain and make it a little bit less reflective. I want a slightly worn out look on that handle. Perfect. We haven't assigned materials to anything else, but the corkscrew handle must certainly be gorgeous wood. 
Fantastic. So I'm going to convert that into a component and specify that it is a rigid joint with the vertical component we were creating just before. There's a neat animation. And let's try that engagement one more time just because it makes me so happy. And it works beautifully. There we go. I told you we would be productive in this part. Thanks a ton for watching. Go on and watch part three.